Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Let's jump right into this video. So I decided to revisit Mountain Blade Warband, which was made in 2010 and then ported over to console in 2016, and it recently made its way onto the Xbox Games Pass. By the end of the video, hopefully you will understand why I think Mountain Blade Warband is worth buying and playing even in the year 2021. I'm going to be mostly basing this video off my experience with the console version, which I played on the Xbox One X. However, that being said, I played 157 hours of this game on Steam, as it's one of the few games that will actually successfully run on my shitty laptop. So I'll be able to compare and contrast the two experiences somewhat. So I'll first talk about the single player experience. The first thing you do in this game is choose your character's background, which determines your starting stats and influences the way NPCs will interact with you. Next, you allocate points into skills, attributes, or weapon mastery in order to create a character that will suit your playstyle. Now this is also how you level up your character in the main game. After reaching a certain threshold of XP, you'll be given points to spend. Then after choosing an awesome name like Sir Coomer, you'll move on to character customization. I'm now the face customization is actually quite in depth. I usually just click randomize though until I find the most Chad looking character. What the fuck is that? Next, I wanna talk about the gameplay and core mechanics. So it's really just a medieval based sandbox game. There really isn't any storyline. There are just quests that you can complete for various people that will usually reward you with XP and gold. This is also a good way to gain a good standing relationship with various lords, as politics plays a big part of this game, if your goal is to become a ruling lord or king. So as you guys just saw, you move around a pretty large scale map with a top down view, and then it transitions into a first or third person mode when you interact with different towns, castles, or engage in battle. So you might be asking yourself right now, well, what's the point of this game? And that's the beauty. You decide your story. You can become a wealthy merchant that avoids combat at all costs, become a warlord, or even a king. So let's be honest, you'll all eventually want to come to power and rule the land, and you can do this in a variety of ways. This leads me to the next basic game mechanic, which is building your army. So you can recruit men in a variety of ways. You can buy them at taverns, you can recruit them at villages, or you can actually hire them after winning a battle if the enemy has any captives. After every battle, you'll actually gain XP, and XP counts towards the whole party. And you can actually level up the troops and make them more powerful. They'll have better weapons, health bars, and equipment. And that's honestly one of the funnest things in the game is to create just some unique and random armies. For example, I've tried an all archer army before. It was really cool to see. Not, not the most effective in a lot of circumstances, but you can get really creative. And there's also a pretty in-depth commander mode, I guess you could call it. Um, in game, you can actually tell your troops to hold certain positions. You can tell them to use certain weapons. You can have them hold different formations. You really feel like you're part of the battle and really controlling the flow of your men. I believe there are roughly 90 different troops. Um, someone please correct me if you know the exact number. But when you eventually siege a castle or take over a town, you'll be given the option to start your own kingdom as long as you're not serving another lord or king. You'll then have to strategically place men in each castle's garrison to protect your lands and order other lords under your command to patrol various areas of your territory as the other kingdoms will start to see you as a threat and go after your property and try to raid you. So managing your land is a big part of this game. At the end of each week, you'll have to pay your troops. On the upside, you'll gain rent money and tariff money from your own lands. The amount of money you get depends on how prosperous your towns are, which depends on factors like if your town has a mill or not, and how many times it has been raided by enemies. You can actually buy upgrades for your towns, which will improve your income and relation with the townspeople. There are honestly so many details to this game, and I'm still learning today. It would be almost impossible to fit every aspect of this game into this video, so I'll just stick with the basics. One thing that I haven't mentioned too much is weaponry and equipment. There's basically every type of medieval weapon that you could think of in this game. There are swords, throwing weapons, 
lances, maces, and even scimitars. The list goes on. There are also different types of horses that you can buy. For example, say you want a very heavy armored horse, well then you're going to have to sacrifice some speed, but in return you'll get much more health for your horse and also bigger charging bonuses. Again, it all really depends on your playstyle and how you decide to fight enemies. In all honesty, I'd rate this game a 10 out of 10 if it weren't for the Potato 2010 graphics and the occasional glitchy looking visuals. And if you're able to look past the graphics, then you're going to have an amazing time. Really, the only thing that I think Warband is missing on console compared to PC is a community. There is really a super awesome modding and I guess you could call it a meme community around Mountain Blade Warband on PC. And this brings me to the multiplayer aspect of the game. I recently tried joining a multiplayer game on console and there are only like two or three populated servers, which is kind of sad. You can tell the game is kind of uh, dying or at least no one's really playing the multiplayer side of it. I'll put some multiplayer gameplay on the screen so you can get an idea of what it looks like. It's nothing too crazy. You basically just go around bashing other players. You choose a faction and a troop type along with your equipment, which costs money, and each kill in-game grants you more money, allowing you to buy better gear for your next respawn. However, even though multiplayer is dying, I'm not too concerned because I feel like the single player experience is really the core of the game, and that's where most of the value is held. So let's talk price. The game is selling for $20, which is a very fair price in my opinion. I've definitely got my $20 worth of entertainment out of this game. It's also included in the Game Pass, so if you own the Game Pass, you have no reason not to try it. So I put together a little pros and cons list, which I'll throw on screen to kind of recap everything. So it has fun and immersive combat, great character leveling, endless army combinations, and a wide variety of gear to use. The cons are that the multiplayer is a bit dead, and the graphics aren't up to, you know, today's standards. But if you can look past those two cons, then really you have an amazing medieval role-playing tactical, I guess, game, you'd say. So yes, this is definitely worth playing, in my opinion. Definitely worth the $20. Go out and give this game a try. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. And as always, have an amazing day.